I'm no kitty kitty kitty. Wow, let's see if my little plan worked here. Uh, threw a light bulb under the uh, CRF 230. Hopefully that took the chill off of her a little bit. Maybe I didn't even need it. It's uh, quite a bit warmer this morning. Okay, I think this is a uh, 2015 uh, Polar Bear Ride number 10. Our uh, Temperature 26 or 27 degrees and starting mileage 570.9 yeah we got dry roads for the most part. <laughs> and it's it's a lot warmer. What was it? 27? Something like that. Anyway, compared to that, uh, I think it was like 5 degrees when I started, uh, when I got right in the, the Beamer yesterday. And, and uh, that's pretty cold. <laughs> I do, I actually do have uh, heated gear, the, I have the, you know, heated jacket liner that I can wear when I'm, but the, the little CRF, uh, it doesn't, uh, I know this uh, corner from years ago. When I was a kid, one time I, I borrowed my dad's pickup, and it was an old International, uh, maybe in the 60s, had a pause attraction rear end. I come around that corner there with that pause attraction and uh, slid right off the road. So I've always respected that corner. Yeah, this is pretty nice this morning. We're going to ride down. Uh, to where I took those cows a couple days ago. What I have to do is I have to go down in the morning and uh, I have to break the ice that's on the water trough because it'll build up with, you know, depending on how cold it is, uh, it, you know, it could get as much as several inches of ice. And the, the cows, they have no way of, uh, of breaking the, breaking ice. Even if they're on a, a natural water, like a pond or something that freezes over, the cows will uh, die of thirst before they can get a drink. Whereas a horse, a horse can go in with their hooves and uh, the, uh, paw to break the ice. And then um, our sheep, uh, they actually, if, if, they, uh, if they're grazing, where they're you know eating the plants that are uh, in the ground uh, even though it may be dry it, it contains some moisture and so the sheep if they're on that kind of uh, diet and they have snow uh, they won't they won't even drink water because they, they like take a bite of uh, feed and then a bite of snow and then a bite of feed and a bite of snow all day long you know and then they'll Take a break, chew their cud, get back up, eat another bite, bite of snow. And uh, years, years ago, for uh, for many years, uh, I uh, ran uh, my business was a range sheep operation. We ran uh, 
about 2,000 head of uh, sheep and in the winter they would go a uh, hundred miles west of here out on the desert uh, near Nevada and uh, they would uh, graze on the you know natural uh, plants that grew out there mostly uh, different types of uh, brush like uh, shed scale and then there was a uh, of oh, some grass, uh, Indian rice grass, curly grass, uh, there's black sage, white sage, uh, brigham brush, different types of things. But but uh, on a good winter uh, with good snow, those 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 sheep would actually come off of their fat. They do well. They do a lot better when they had snow because if they if uh, there was no snow and you had to uh, haul water to them then the sheep would have to trail into the water every day so they would walk uh, a lot and they'd actually it, it'd actually they'd walk off their fat you know they're they they weren't able to uh, do as well and gain because they're walking too much whereas on the snow they'll just lay around like they're licking ice cream you know and do uh, very well so but the old cows we just gotta go break that uh, I anyway we made it here I'm gonna this will be our uh, turnaround point There's not too much ice and this uh, I should probably only take me a minute Yeah, they're not bad at all. Only well, like, what, inch of ice? But even with that little, just an inch of ice, the cows, they can't break that. Well, we're gonna, I'm gonna, Come on, first gear. I'm gonna head back, but I'm gonna s swing up by the uh, gas station. Just get a little bit of fresh gas in here. It'll probably only take a gallon, but this thing doesn't, it gets really good mileage, so. Anyway, I guess I've, uh, I've already yacked enough today, I'm just going to head on up there to the truck stop. Got some much needed supplies here, the Diet Coke. <laughs> uh, so it'll be good. Yeah, I was real uh, comfortable today on the ride. Uh, on all the other rides, I've been wearing a pair of Nike. Uh, I call them tennis shoes or whatever, or whatever you want to call them. But anyway, they, they'd uh, get damp and my, my toes would get cold. So I, I just wear those Nikes and I wear a pair of gaiters to uh, you know, keeps the wind from blowing up my pants. But anyway, I finally uh, got smart. I had a a pair of those um, insulated uh, rubber boots, the muck, muck boots, and I'd worn them to where the uh, the tops had holes all in them. So I uh, actually cut the tops off to where they're almost they're they're just a. Uh, just come up about to the ankle. Anyway, they were laying there, so I stuck them on with a couple pair of wool socks and, uh, and my uh, the gaiters fit over that, and it works perfect. My, my toes are toasty. So, 
so without any heated gear uh, I'm perfectly comfortable I, I can tell that if, if it got as it gets colder that you're gonna start uh, you know getting some of that cold into your chest and I've I, I do have on a uh, like I got on my base gear and then I have a wool uh, like a Pendleton shirt and then I then I have on this uh, my uh, first gear uh, dual sport jacket and it has a little liner in it so but I can tell you're gonna you get a little cold there and then I'd uh, read somewhere you could like put a piece of newspaper there would cut that wind so might try that well let's see get going straight for a go across the ices Yeah, one thing about this ice, you, you uh, never know what's <laughs> what it's going to do, so what it's going to do to you. But this is a whole different realm than the 1200 GS, you know, that just the weight difference of the bikes is, is a, a factor. And then, of course, granted the the more weight you have, possibly the more traction you would have, providing you had the correct tires. So I don't know, but uh, I just got, uh, you know, the, some dirt bike tires on Nobby's. I think they're a Maxxis, uh, kind of an intermediate hardness. And, uh, you know, they seem to, I've been, you know, riding out, I was riding out in that snow foot deep the other day. and. Uh, they're going quite well, so I think it may be a good tire. They're actually not a DOT tire, but you know, I can get by with it around here, not having the DOT. I can get it inspected, and uh, you know, if you're going to run knobbies, dirt bike tires, you're going to wear the damn things out in a thousand or fifteen hundred miles anyway depending on how you ride because you, you know you won't want to have some decent ones on there to be able to do what you want to do so it's uh, basically no big deal anyway here we are we made it back safely we uh, got the ice broke and our ending mileage is 580.2 580.2 This is Dr. Dual Sport out